And by the way, I'm not a proponent of bringing them in. Okay? I'm not a proponent. How about this, though? Skip Bayless on Undisputed on Fox said that Baker Mayfield would be an upgrade on Jalen Hurts as quarterback with the Eagles. What? Yeah. What? Yes. Welcome to the middle, Barrett Brooks, Dan Cilio. I found something that Barrett cannot get to work. He can make bumpers. He can make fixtures for his boat, but he can't make a new mic work. I, I know, it. man. This is this, this the Yeti, too, the blue Yeti, and it's not working, man. The blue what? Yeti. This is like one of the top of the line ones, too, man. I was Look told to get thing, this. man. Holy yes. cow, it looks like a microscope. Right. You know, so this thing is supposed to be... Top of the line as far as electronics, you know, I was told to get this kind of mic, but it's not working right now. So I guess I got to go through and get it, you know. Something. Man, it looks like the Zach Pascal of <laughs> microphones, dog. <laughs> now, don't get me started on that. Don't get me started on Zach Pascal, man. <laughs> what the, dude, and, and you just got through talking about Howie and how he's just <laughs> underwhelming as far. And I understand why he did it. I understand why he went and got Zach. Because Zach is. Who? <laughs> I, I, it's, it's not that's not his pick i'm not gonna say it's not howie that's 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 all nick sirianni that's his dog mentality putting it in the wide receiver room that's what he is no no davy boy he's not he's oh, not Jalen rager more. <laughs> he's was, not Jalen hey, rager i was me i was waiting for more of your professional and brilliant analysis of Zach Pascal, because yesterday Xander goes like this. Hey, man, we got really a lot of like good commentary on Zach Pascal. And I went like this. Well, hang on. I got to look him up. <laughs> 470 yards. What? 470 yards. He's been like for like the last two years. Okay. <laughs> hey, Adam, I told you it's a nice one, man. But look, he's that's he's your like veteran wideout. 470 yards. Oh, he's a good blocker. They say he's <laughs> he's J Jaw 2.0. By the way, he here, he's from Upper Marlboro. He um went to Old Dominion. Um <laughs> I, I you know, I, I mean, look, you know, if you're really looking for a professional breakdown here, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to lean on my friend here because um yeah, I, I don't know what else to say, man. I mean, okay, that's your veteran wide receiver. I mean, we go from – and by the way, there's a moratorium on Big Sills now talking about that guy in Cleveland. So from now on, I'm just going to say DW. <laughs> uh, we go from DW to Zach Pascal. I mean, I'm just – I'm curious where to go here with this. And, you know, I'm just like – you know, I mean, so Howie's not – has Howie ever looked at free agency as an important part of building the team? Has he ever really been a guy? Because help, help me out here, Barrett. Oh, that's actually his, his MO. Is, oh, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's where, he's, that's where he's good at. That's where he's masterful at. Taking guys and bringing them in that, that can come in and be – can be contributors. Like he's brought in guys, you know, Timmy Jernigan, uh, Alshon Jeffrey. He brought in um, – he brought in uh, Chris Very Long, slight. you know. Darius Slay, he's brought in quality free agents, but I think this is this isn't Howie this time. This is all oh, this, this Nick is a Nick time. This, this is, is a Nick time. This is this Nick is solid. Him, yep. Nick probably told him, "Hey, this kid here can play. He doesn't no, get the opportunity, but no, I would turn this, around and say this: Michael Pittman was the only guy on that football team that Carson Wentz really had to throw the football to. Exactly. Okay. I mean, I would say this to you, Barrett, as a offensive passing attack. Carson Wentz had less wide receivers in Indianapolis than what Jalen Hurts had in Philadelphia. I mean, you drafted a guy in the first round. You have the so-called overrated and overhyped Jalen Rager. I get it. Okay, you had a better tight end, I guess, in Dallas Goddard. But Carson Wentz threw to Michael Pittman. No one else. And still had 27 touchdowns and seven interceptions. I'm not making a case for him. I'm just saying – if you can't break the lineup in Indianapolis, I mean, Barrett, okay, you're the third or fourth guy in Indy? 
That yeah. tells me a little bit on why Pro Football Focus had him ranked 94th out of 94 <laughs> wide receivers in the league. <laughs> how, how, okay, what's the common sense? Now, is it a money thing? Does he like him? And you know this too, Barrett. You made the comment about Butch Davis in Cleveland where he wanted one of his boys from Miami instead of you in there. And it was just a personality thing where he wanted one of his guys. It, no, but he, you knew the guy wasn't better than you. Yep, but he it had one of his guys in there. It had nothing to do with my ability to play. It was it more wasn't. so he wanted his guy from Miami. Well, that's exactly what this is. That's right. Zach Pascal, Pascal is a guy that he wanted under his fold. He wanted in his locker room. He's a locker room guy. That's what he is. And there's sometimes you need a locker room guy, but not in the second week of free agency. He'd have been he'd have been still a free agent in June, July. He'd have still been afraid. Why go out and get him right now? It doesn't make sense to me. You're trying to make a splash. I'm looking at the, you know, I'm looking at the uh, the free agent trade tracker, and people are getting gobbled up, man, by, you know, I mean, uh, there's quality, quality players out here. You know, oh, I, I, I've got some um, middle linebackers and inside linebackers. Look at what Paul said here. Out of 475 NFL transactions this offseason, <laughs> Where does the signing of wide receiver Zach Pascal rank? I'll wait for the response. I mean, really? And Paul, here, look, Razor goes can't do 76. It. I can't I do mean, it, Paul. You know, I mean, I mean, how Xander goes, hey, make sure you hit on Zach Pascal. I go, okay, well, hang on here. I let me go to NFL reference guide here because I have no idea who the F this guy is here, man. I was like, okay, so veteran wide receiver. That's the kind of wide receiver, though, you're gonna get. In Philly today, because of the kid that we have now playing quarterback. And again, I promised myself, we're moving forward. I'm rooting for him. And by the way, Barrett, I don't speak for you, but I know both of us are rooting for this kid to have great success. Yes, no question nobody about that. Is, nobody's, I will never be a guy that does this. Well, because I didn't get Deshaun in here. I'm going to do that old school radio guy and go, oh, yeah, every time this guy trips his toe – or stubs his toe, that I'm going to bang on the kid. That's not going to be the case here. We're going to. DW be wouldn't have did that. DW wouldn't have did that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right, right, right. You know, you see that guy, man. He can't find single coverage. Oh my God, are you kidding me, man? Baker right, right. could have found that. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm going to throw something at you here. You know what Xander said? So I threw this topic at him before we went on the air. He goes, "Don't throw this out to Philadelphia folks, because they'll look at you and they'll laugh at you." And by the way. It, it, it's just it's a comment that a national commentator made, and I think it's an indictment a little bit of what people think of Jalen around the country. Outside of what we feel, okay, outside of what we feel, and by the way, I'm not a proponent of bringing him in, okay? I'm not a proponent. How about this, though? Skip Bayless on Undisputed on Fox said that Baker Mayfield would be an upgrade on Jalen Hurts as quarterback with the Eagles. What? Yeah. What? Yes. Yes, he said he'd be, he he would take him over Jalen. But see that listen, that's the national perception. That's the national perception. And remember something. He had Jarvis Landry, Odell Beckham Jr. He had a he had a quality tight end. He had a really good offensive line. I mean, dude, man, I mean, I, I don't see how and, and plus get this. Think about Baker Mayfield where he is today. Bro, I, I think this guy's going to be a backup somewhere, if anywhere. I don't know. He He's owed $22 million this year. There's Perhaps no way anybody's picking him up. All of that. Yes. Well, I mean, the Eagles ate up $34 million. What is $22 million? That's nothing. But they got their guy. But, but there lies the problem. How are they going to be able to sign their free – Sign more phrases. How are they going to go out and be able to um, to um, put themselves in a position to sign their draft picks when they owe this guy? What did, what did they give him um, initial signing bonus? That way, you only have a, a million dollar um, salary. Yeah. How are they going to pay other guys? You can't. I don't. Andrew Barry, you must be a musician. I don't know how you're going to um, do this. No, no he's going to be twenty five percent of the cap. Yeah. No quarterback. No quarterback over 12.2% of the salary cap Barrett has ever won a Super Bowl. So they're going to constantly going to have to go back and restructure that contract so that they can just keep offensive line 
in my opinion, what will happen in Cleveland, they're 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 praying that the cap continues to go up, Barrett. They're praying that that cap continues to go up so that they're going to be able to say in two years, two years from now, go like this. Okay. That thing comes down to 13%, 14% of the cap because next year is supposed to go to 228. If it goes to 228, that number goes down from 25% to 13% or 14%, something I saw yesterday so that it's a little bit more in line with, the quarterbacks and how you build your roster through the draft, how you build it through free agency. Because as you said, there's no way this year, get this. So the money that you gave to Sean Watson, you're going to have to sit back and look at, like you said, how you can't be a free agent person any longer in the next two years. You got to sign your draft choices. Right. Right. And then again, too, you've given all your first round draft choices away. They want a number one too, by the way, for Mayfield, you'll never, the most you would get for Mayfield would be a fifth round draft choice right now. That's, that's the highest. That's the highest you'll get for Baker. Mayfield. I wouldn't give anything. I was. I told Xander. I go. I wouldn't give anything for the guy because, Barrett, why would I give you a fifth round draft choice when I know you got to cut him? Exactly. I mean, you, you're you're gonna cut. You're not gonna do this, dude. You're not gonna have a fifty million dollar guy on your team and then a twenty two million dollar backup. Right. You're going to have $72 million against your cap and two players and one guy's drinking water? No way, man. No way. So, I mean, I I saw that and I was like, but that tells me a little bit about the perception of how people see Jalen Hurts outside of Philadelphia. Yep. Do you think it's still split down the middle in Philly on how people look at him and perceive him as the quarterback of this team? Or do you think – Everybody was pretty sold on what he – did he do enough last year to suffice enough Eagle fans in that city to go, let's roll it back with him one more year and see what he has? Um, they did until the playoff game. He had probably won over 80, 77, 80, 85% of the fans to go forward him until the playoff game. If they had ended the season there and they didn't make it to the playoffs, I say – Probably 80 to 85% of the fan base would have been all good with Jalen Hurts going forward and being the captain of the ship going into next year. But as soon as they saw him play against Tom Brady and Tampa Bay's defense, it changed the whole outlook on what this team needed. And then they went through the playoffs and watched those quarterbacks in the playoffs. And it didn't help that, you know, uh, the Bengals quarterback so young was ripping it up. And it really changed the perception on how you want your team to be constructed with a young quarter or a quarterback that's a pocket passer. You know, it really changed how people thought of Jalen Hurts. You know, it didn't make a difference what he did for eight games when he was just masterful at, 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 at running that offense and leading the NFL and, and rushing and, 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 you know, offensive output. You know, that, that didn't matter. It was all about when they got to the playoffs and they saw everybody else's new toy and saw Artur go out there and get deboed by, by, uh, by, by the Tampa Bay team. You know, then it changed the perception of everything. And then going through the playoff, watching these young quarterbacks and, you know, and, and watching them play and, you know, what they were able to execute and the offenses they were running, it really changed how these people were looking at, you know, this young quarterback. Didn't it change your opinion? Because it changed mine. Because it, when I saw him have to play against better coaching staffs and better football teams – you know, you know, and we're going to use Wentz here as as a barometer. Carson did beat four playoff teams. Yeah. You know, I mean, Jalen did not play well against teams that were playoff football teams this past season. I mean, you know, they beat the teams that are on the schedule. They beat the teams they had to play and win against, and they did. And I think the Denver game, going into Denver after Denver had beat the pants off the Cowboys, remember something, how that progression went. Denver beat the pants off the Cowboys, and the Eagles went out to Denver, which is, you know this, that's a great home field advantage when you play in that joint, man. You I can't mean, breathe. <laughs> you can't breathe. Hey, dude, that's a real thing. Hey, 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 Barrett, I get up there, man. We're playing against John Elway. I had never played in Denver. Bruh, I had different- never been there. I'm going through workouts. I'm like, damn, <laughs> I can't catch my freaking breath. Pre-game was tough, wasn't it? <laughs> Dude, I'm going like, I can't catch my breath. And then a guy gives me um, a black beauty 
before the game. <laughs> and I'm going like this. And then one of these little sprinkly things, like before, and like Crawford Kerr, man, he gives it to I, I've never done. I go, all right, man. I'm doing this on the side. <laughs> <laughs> you a mother ever. Hey, man. <laughs> What's wrong? I can't get my breath. <laughs> Dude, it was a real Elway's running around too, going and going. And, 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 I'm jumping off sides like a, a man. Hey, <laughs> bro, so I get over to the side and Jimmy goes, "What are you doing?" I, I'm like, oh, "Man, I just uh, he just jumped off sides three times." Dude, he got me like this. Uh, hut, hut, hut. <laughs> Boom! I'm off, I'm off side. Dude, he was so good at that influx of the snap count, man. It's such a. By the way, Jalen needs to work on that. Because it helps his whole line out. I mean, no I mean there were a couple no times there this last year. Because, hey, Barrett, me as a defensive lineman, I watch for little tiny things that he does and doesn't do. And what pros do, that cadence is a way to really help old linemen out a lot. If you start getting into a rhythm on first sound, second sound, guy like Barrett will go back to him and go, bro, mix it up a bit here, man. We got to – this guy's jumping off on the first sound. And he's in my ass on the first sound. The really great quarterbacks, man, will have an influx. They'll, they'll, and you, we watch for that. Uh, he likes to go on second sound when he, when he pats the ball. So we'll keep an eye on that. There's little tendencies that all quarterbacks do. And, yep. and that's, but I guess that's just experience on working with the game a little more where Jalen just needs more reps. Yeah. I mean, you, there's little, little idiosyncrasies, you know, I mean, some guys, you know, they come to the line and, they had that voice reflection, man. <laughs> yeah. Man, just like, you know, Manning had the same thing. Tom Brady had the same thing. And you don't want that defensive line to get a key because once they get that key, they start jumping the snap count faster than you can. You know the play and you know the snap count. But I think, you know, when you look at, you know, Jalen and the opponents that he played, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not being soft, but I'm going to give him a pass simply because the coaching staff didn't know what the hell they were doing either. Especially at the beginning of the year when they were two exactly. and five. So, you know, they you you can't you can't necessarily put all that on Jalen. They no, have and, to learn and, what and, it and is. Barrett, to your point, remember Brady's first year? Oh, they get yeah. beat in Chicago, and there was like this little tug of war between Arians and him where Arians wanted to throw the ball deep down the field. And Brady wanted to be more intermediate passing like he was in New England. And there was a tug of war because Bruce's idea is no risk it, no biscuit. Yep. But Brady never – think about this. Brady's never won a Super Bowl before he got to Tampa with a speed-wide receiver. Randy Moss did not win a Super Bowl in New England. Nope. They won the AFC and got upset by the Giants in the Super Bowl. So he never had – that, that receiver that took the top off the defense, Brady was intermediate. And you know what made him great also, Barrett, that quarterbacks, in my opinion, like Patrick Mahomes, still struggle, Justin Herbert too. He's so patient, and he loves two players on his team, the punter and the field goal kicker. Brady's like, <laughs> Brady's like this. Hey, if I don't get it here, I'm not jamming it in on third and eight on a play. I'm going to play field position. We'll pick up five yards. Okay, we're three short. We'll punt it away. That's a high percentage way of playing the game. Whereas Mahomes will try to stick that on third and eight in there, and he gets the turnover, or Herbert gets the turnover, or Aaron Rodgers gets – well, he, Aaron Rodgers doesn't turn the ball over during a regular season at all. But you get my drift, and what Brady will do is it's okay for Tom to go, hey, three and out, but as long as they're moving the change and changing field position and not having minus plays like Wentz does – that that's how Tom plays the game. That's that's a really tough way to coach a kid and tell a kid how to win games. Brady Brady's not the most talented arm thrower. He's not the most talented runner. He's he's just knows what to do and how to move the sticks. Two minutes left in a game, Barrett. I'll tell you what. Between Michael Jordan and Tom Brady, two minutes left in a game, man. Those two dudes, they just know how to heart, win. Man. They'll take your heart, man. And and. It's, it's, it has a lot to do with – and this is one of the tangibles that I think Jalen really has. Jalen has it. He just didn't display it. He didn't. He wasn't coached to display it a lot. You know, he's one of those guys at the end of games that you have to pick your poison with. Are you, is, is he going to be a passer 
or is he going to be a runner? And when you have a guy like that, it gives you both skill sets you have to defend. A lot of these quarterbacks, like even Matt Ryan, you know he's going to throw the ball. So if you play coverage, you have a greater chance of hurting um, the Colts. Well, it was well, he was with Atlanta then. You know what I'm saying? Because they didn't have a running game. But now he's going up there. He has a running game. It's going to be a little different. But you know, Jalen has that 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 running ability that could really help him out. But I mean, you know, you look at what he has to do now. He has to go in and get that quarterback guru and really teach him how to become a real student of the game, especially towards the end of games or making big plays. I mean, if I was him, I'd just work on third down and work on red zone coverage. Those two alone. And just go through, I mean, not just being on the field, but also watching film, breaking film down, looking at what I need to look at to see where it needs to go. Watch a film on Tom Brady. Tom Brady knows exactly where the ball is going to go simply because of what he sees the defense doing. He needs to get that, and that just comes from sitting down and talking with somebody that, that's that's used to doing it. You know what I mean? You know, picking yeah, but he also, brain. he also needs players around him. Jalen does. I, I, you know, let, let, let's, let's not forget, and like you say, you go back to Brady's 2001 year. I mean, that thing was a defensive football team, special teams, Vinatieri. Yep. And he he learned a lot in that first year. That team wasn't driven. That first Super Bowl championship team wasn't driven on the back of Tom Brady. No. Brady learned how to become the football player that he would become today. In that whole process, and it was Belichick teaching him situational play calling, situations that he's on the field. Barrett, I, I keep I keep bringing this up and. I was talking to my daughter yesterday about this that I wish that I had done a better job of, and we've talked about this, is that, hey, for me to be a coach today, I would teach kids, what do you do in this situation, more so than anything technique. That's that's my assistant offensive line coach. That's my offensive line coach's responsibility. But to me as a coordinator, I'm going to put people in a room and go, what are we doing here? What are we going to do in this position? What are we going to do here? How are you going to handle him? He likes to do this when it comes to third and long. This is his favorite pass rush move. You know this. When you're breaking down tendencies of a football player you're playing against, what was the number one thing? And this will tell me, again, how Jalen looks at the football game too. What's the number one thing when a guy lined up? First, you had to figure out if it's a 43 or 34, if you're going to get a guy head up or not. Yep. Then you got to figure out, okay, what was the first thing you did when you were profiling a player that you, you played against? I, first thing I would do, I would see uh, where he likes to line up on certain downs. If he's a wide nine guy on third down, if he's a guy that wants to get up on you, the bigger, stronger guys that know how to rush and and and, and fight well in close quarters, they were the usually the hardest ones for me to go against because they can have rush inside and outside. When you have those guys on the outside that are just going to run up the field, I could dance with them all day. But when you have those guys that's going to get up on you tight and now they can go inside or outside and they have great hands and can move around a little bit, those are the guys that give you the most trouble, you know. So I see that first. Then I go in and research what's their best pass rushing move. What are they beating people the most with? Because every time you play against somebody, there's one thing that they do best that they always fall back on. Just like me, I had one set that I think that nobody could beat me on this set. If I did this set, I could win every single time I used it. You just couldn't use it all the time. But I knew I could put this set and I could beat a guy with this set. So, you know, there was little things you could say, you know, if you see how much um, how much, you know, pressure he has on his fingers, you know, as he's coming out of stance, you know, how high his ass is up. If his ass is up real high, that means he's coming off the ball. If his ass kind of low, that means he might be a stunt because he might have to move laterally. If, you, if, you're, if your butt is down, that means you're more apt to move laterally. If you're up in the air, that means you're going straight ahead. You're going speed wherever you're going. You're just going to that one place. Those are little things that I looked at, you know, as far as a, um, a defensive guy. You know, and, and all the things that you said, immediately here's how I would defend that. I would go like this. To me, a guy like you, as big as you are, even though good feet, I'm going to line up at a three technique. And the issue with you would be is you have to have a second move. Yep. <laughs> because if you're just going to one move him and you're going to get into his body, get into your body, then what's going to happen is you're going to be in a position where he's just going to grab a hold of you inside here and you're done. So you've got to get on your outside shoulder in a three technique, or if you want to get inside, you've got to make sure that your opposing defensive tackle gets the attention of that center because if I'm coming to your inside in the inside gap in that A gap, you're going to get help from the center in there too. So 
I've got to be cognizant of that. I would say the second move on you and potentially just keep running, keep running, and one power move just to throw yep. it off because yep. just to get your hand in there it's because you know what you're going to do? You're going to see me keep setting. You're going to keep moving your feet. You got to move. You've got to move a guy's feet like, like you. Big yep. dudes move their feet. Once you're, once my feet are stopped, I'm done. The play's over. It's over. Well, then you're a two like move guy. You're a two move guy, Barrett. You, you can't. You're traditionally not going to get beat on one move. But how you you would get beat would be on a double move if a guy's got a great second move. Like yep. Aaron Donald, to me, I think what makes him great is his hands, his alignment. And the fact that he can beat the guy in front of him on both sides, one gap or a uh, a gap or b gap. Yep, yep. And he's 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 matchful getting up the field, and all his movement is going towards the quarterback. Even if he goes inside and tries to cross your face, everything is going upfield towards the quarterback. That's what makes him great. So, and that's kind of where I feel as though, you know, I hate to bring it up, man, but I think Fletch, he's got a little realism now. He sees that life is real. He's no he has to bring his his hard hat to work. He's going on a one year deal, so this is a contract year for him. He hasn't been in the contract it's a show year in a while. Me here. Yeah, so he has to go out there and really play. So I see him coming back in the ultimate shape. But I'm, I'm trying to figure out what is this Derek Barnett thing? You know, he's coming back. I don't understand. I don't think he is coming back. He's still a free agent. I'm he looking can... for news. There's no news saying he's coming back. Yeah, there's no news on that yet. No Stream, news. don't be scaring me like that, guys. You know, chill out a little bit. You know, don't, don't be scaring me like that. <laughs> How about these inside linebackers? Bobby Wagner, Dante Hightower, Kyle take, Van Oy. Any of these guys? I would take uh, of course I'd take Wags, Bobby Wagner. That'd be my that'd be my 74 tackles last year. <laughs> That's ridiculous, man. You know, and, and you get a guy like on the internet. Anymore. Yeah. So I want Bobby, but you know Bobby's gonna want that that big contract. You know he wants that quarterback money. You know he wants at least, at the very least, fifty sixty well, mil. Well, yeah, you know, we just contact Pascal, so I don't know, man. I mean, <laughs> you know, I mean, breaking that kind of money down here. I mean, okay, Van Oy. Well, why doesn't he go? Why doesn't he go get a guy like this, Barrett? He has to spend money, and they don't think it's a premium position. What? They don't spend money on a linebacker position. That's, that's not a premium position. So they don't do it. You know what I mean? I mean, even even, you know, the signings that they've had the past couple of years, they they haven't done it. They just haven't yeah, done but, it. Yeah, but but Barrett, it's not a premium position when you got an elite D line and a couple good corners. Right. Okay, they you do. can get away like the Rams got away with it, okay? Because people you couldn't name me the linebackers on the Rams, but you know Jalen Ramsey and you know Aaron Donald and you knew Von Miller. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, I and so I get that, but when you're 31st in sacks and you're not very good against playoff teams and people can run the ball on you at times, I mean, you've look, watch this. I put Bobby Wagner on this team. I get I, I get Bobby Wagner, I get an edge rusher in the draft. Dude, man, you've He's improved that defensive and Hassan Reddick they signed. By the way, yep. that Reddick deal is very friendly. To the Eagles, 24 million bucks, 45 million dollars, six year contract. Yep. 1375, the sign in bonus. Plus, the last couple of years, you know, this will be dead years. Those years won't matter anywhere because they like to spread it out. So, a very friendly deal. 45 million over six, 1375, as I said, in a sign. You got Hassan Reddick, you get Bobby Wagner, you get a guy in the draft. I don't know, Barrett. I think you've improved the talent on your football team on that side of the ball, dude. And and, and if they go out and get Wyatt from um from um from Georgia, the other guy that nobody really talks about, who was actually the best player who, who on their I, defensive front, I, I picked Barrett. I picked them to take him, Trayvon Walker. I picked them to take him with the nineteenth pick because he ran a four seven five. Yeah, he's a defensive end. He rush edger. Give give me him all day. Give me him all day. But yeah. I'm talking about the defensive lineman, uh, Wyatt. Um, the defensive. Uh, uh, oh, tackle. oh, Devontae Wyatt. Yes, the real deal. The real deal. You know he's he's graded and ranked higher. Yes, for, uh, <laughs> because than, he, uh, Jordan he was, Davis. He was the cog that made that whole defense work. He applied pressure all the time. You talking about somebody that's going to get up the field? 
and create pressure. He was that guy. I mean, everybody's talking about Davis. No, Wyatt was the guy that made that defense work. The lone hero inside of that defense that people never saw. He could he got the most double teams. He's the guy that made Davis look good. That's why Davis had a lot of one-on-one blocks. That's because Wyatt was wreaking havoc in the inside. He was killing folks, man. And he never got the credit. But you know, when you watch film, he's he's right there, front and center. He's blazing. You know, he's that shining light in the middle of that defense. I like him over even Walker or Davis. You know, Frank brings a great point up about this guy, Ajabo. You know, he got hurt on his pro day, right? That was kind of messed up how they did him, too, man. Hey, did I don't you know. How he, how, no, how did he get hurt? Bro, he, 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 um, he, he, you know, ripped his Achilles. He ruptured his Achilles. Oh. But after he ruptured it, he was, he was, he was doing a drill. He ruptured it. And nobody really came to his, to, I mean, uh, to, to him to see if he was all right. I mean, the scouts didn't even come over and look at him. They were just like, you know, and kind of looked away, turned their back, and walked away. I'm like, yo, what the what what the f is yeah, this? Yeah. <laughs> the guy needs a stretcher here, right? You know, they just walked away from him. I was pissed, man. Look how it up. This, look it how up. About this, Zara, Garrett, can you look it up? Let me see here. Yeah, how did how did he get hurt? He was doing a drill. Okay. Look at this. Watch this. Michigan David Ajabo was a projected top 10 pick in next month's NFL draft, but that could change now that Ajabo has a torn left Achilles tendon. Tore it Saturday at Michigan's Pro Day workout. Had a great season That's horrible. last year with 11 sacks. Dude still got his hands in his pocket, just turned around and walked away. Look. The guy is out there running the drill. He picks the ball up, looks at it, walks away. Another NFL. Wow. Bro, what is that, man? That's now you're talking about, And you're talking about, you know, cattle and moo, you know. We'll just meet out there for them. Dude, that's crazy for that to happen, and they just walk away like that. Didn't even care about them. Hey, Barrett, how dare you talk like that? <laughs> I, I know, man. I man, know. You know they don't look at us like human beings. <laughs> you know they don't. They look at us as assets. Exactly, exactly. How much money can we make? Hey, that's and exactly how little do I have to pay them? Right, exactly. Okay, but that leads me to this. Okay. He's probably going to drop to third, third round, fourth round, fifth round. If you're Howie, watch this. I, I hate to be watch this. I hate to put on management hat because I'm going to sound like a tool bag here. Watch this, man. It's really David Ajabo. Did you see that injury, man? That thing was horrible. All right, I'll draft him in the fifth round. <laughs> and you get the guy on a deal. You're not paying him a lot. You put him on a. You put. You, you draft him in the fifth round. You know that he's going to play next year. It's a six month injury. And it's different. And it's from a futures quarter. deal who would be a first rounder next year. Yep. You got yep. a first rounder in the fifth round. Would you draft him like that? I, I I think I might take a flyer on that and go, I'll give a fifth rounder for a guy who would have been. Let me see what they had him graded at here. Oh, uh, he was graded. He's graded. He, he'd been a top 20. 20. Top 20. Yeah, he'd be a top 20. But you look at the job. Old, he won't make it past the third, second, or third round. Even with the injury. Yeah. I mean, it, actually, we did that to Sidney Jones. You know what I'm saying? Two years, three years ago, we drafted Sidney Jones. He was supposed to be the first the first cornerback, the best cornerback in the draft. He ruptured his Achilles in workouts while up in Washington, the University of Washington. And uh, we drafted him in the second round. He rehabbed, came back, but he never really – he never really – Stepped up to what he was, you know what I'm saying? I think that's more of, you know, that's them West Coast teams, man. But he never really came, you know, played up to the hype. But then he left. Now he's playing well for Seattle. He's balling to Seattle. But it's kind of the same thing. It's different with Ojabo because I think he'll come in. He'll work it. He'll still be cool. He'll come back from the Achilles and be okay. He'll still be a, a potent pass rusher. So I, I would definitely invest in him. But he's not gonna be, get. He's not gonna make it past. The you second think or third even round. with that injury, man, oh, an Achilles injury, Barrett without is a, a pretty doubt. significant injury, right? Too. Right. Without a doubt, there's no question. But because he be he's a, so young, you're thinking that he rehabs and he comes back. If he's a, if he blows that Achilles out in his late twenties, that's a problem, right? But in his right. early twenties, we're talking rehab. The guy's back up with technology today. You're thinking that this guy doesn't get past the second round. This bro doesn't get he doesn't get past it. And he probably he probably plays the latter part of next year. He'll probably huh. play the latter part of next year. I, uh big Jason Peters. 
He ripped his. He was back in eight months. He played the next year. He was back in eight months. He he ripped it during the, during the year. Came back the next year and balled out. Um, Brandon Brooks. I would, did the I, same would put thing. A, I would put a second round around Jabo. Yeah, Brandon Brooks did the same thing. He ripped his. Came back the next year and balled. Started the first game. So it's the way they do medicine these days. Where the medicine is now, they can get those guys back quick. You saw what Kobe did. Kobe was back, you know, the same year. So I mean, it is a possibility he even plays next year. Hey, I got, I, 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 I got, I got one off the, off the cuff, uh, basketball topic for you. Two minutes left in a ball game. You want Jabbar Skyhook? You want Jordan from the perimeter to win a game? Last a shot. Game. Oof, oof. Jabbar on the box. With the sky hook. That's automatic. Or Jordan from the perimeter. Let's see, two minutes know. left in the game. Who do you want with two, two minutes left in the game? No, two do you mean two seconds left in the game? Two to seconds win the left game. in the game. I'm Jabbar going I, sky I, hook or Jordan. Yeah, I, I'm going I'm going Kareem with the sky hook. Because that was automatic for him. Mike, yeah, Mike is automatic also, but I mean you, you, I'm just I'm just going with the numbers, man. The closer you get, the better the numbers are, the better the odds are. And then you look at the player. Kareem would have hit that 10 out of 10 times. <laughs> That's right. That just shows you, in my opinion, when people talk about the greatest NBA player of all time, the ball you want in the hand, the guy you want the ball in the hands of at the end of a basketball game is not Jordan. It's Jabbar. Because get this, Kareem lost one game in college, three national championships, three-time college player of the year, three times finals MVP. He won six NBA championships, six MVPs, Hey, man, and he's all-time leading scorer. Well, that guy's the greatest basketball player that's ever lived and proved it at every level. I don't know why Jabbar's name, but because he's an aloof dude, you know, Jabbar it's not never that. gets the credit for being the player that he was. It's not that because everything had to be – everything had to go through somebody else to get to him, and that's that's the reason why. Jordan would make his own happen. That's what makes Jordan – the greatest basketball player. He can make things happen. He would win games in spite of. And that's what made I, 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 I'm a Jordan guy. Jordan How is about the this? Guy. So Kareem wins in Milwaukee, then takes his talents to Los Angeles and wins five more championships. Hey, man, I'm telling you. <laughs> think about what he did in his career. This guy Absolutely. won nine titles. That's crazy. Okay, three national championships. And he also won six NBA championships in his legendary career. I, I just – people always go, oh, yeah, man, George's the greatest closer. I'm like, hey, man, I'll take Kareem at the end of ball games, man. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I want to show I, – I, let, let's find out where we are now as Eagle – and Eagle roster as we're getting ready for the draft because obviously free agent. Is how we making a mistake right now, not being more active, and free agency. Yes. Let's hit more on that and expand more on that. That's Barrett Brooks. Big Sills. Middle. Keep, keep it right here. We'll be back in three.